Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE biology lesson where you'll learn absolutely everything you need to know on topic 20.1 food supply. As always we'll be following the Cambridge syllabus exactly and we'll cover absolutely everything you need to know for your final exam. For topic 20.1 you need to describe the ways in which humans have increased food production and describe the advantages and disadvantages of large-scale monocultures of crop plants and intensive livestock production. There's no extended supplement for this lesson. We'll begin with the different ways in which humans have increased food production so as to keep up with the demands of a growing population. Number one, modern agricultural machinery like tractors and combines have enabled humans to plough, seed and harvest with greater efficiency and cultivate far larger plots of land. Number two, chemical fertilizers. In nature, when plants die, the minerals contained within their tissues are returned to the soil by decomposers. In agriculture, most of the crop is removed, causing the soil to become deficient in minerals over the course of repeated harvests. To counter this, chemical fertilizers, such as ammonium nitrate, which enriches the soil with nitrogen, are spread over the soil, improving yield. Number three, insecticides are used to control and eliminate pests that can damage crops and reduce yields. Targeting harmful insects like aphids and caterpillars may help to maintain crop quality, prevent losses due to pest damage, and improve overall yield and profitability. Number four, herbicides are chemical substances used to control or eliminate weeds. Weeds compete with crops for water, nutrients and sunlight, affecting their growth and reducing yields. Note that both insecticides and herbicides are sometimes referred to as pesticides. Number five, selective breeding, also known as artificial selection, involves choosing and breeding plants or animals with desirable characteristics to improve production. It's been used to enhance traits like yield, disease resistance, drought tolerance and flavour in crop plants, and meat quality, milk production and disease resistance in livestock. Next, you need to describe the advantages and disadvantages of large-scale monocultures of crop plants. So monoculture is the cultivation of a single crop in a given area. All competitors of the crops are removed and replaced with a dense population of only one species. This type of farming increases crop yield and can be managed more efficiently with agricultural machinery. It's also more profitable for farmers as more crops can be grown on less land. However, the lack of genetic variation within a population of crop plants means that the entire population could be wiped out by disease, flooding or drought. Monocultures also result in the loss of nutrients from the land, the death or displacement of natural plant and animal communities, and the degradation and erosion of the soil. In addition, the heavy use of pesticides may cause harm to non-target organisms and contaminate rivers and lakes. Finally, you need to describe the advantages and disadvantages of intensive livestock production. So intensive livestock production, otherwise known as factory farming, is more efficient than natural or free-range alternatives and the yield is much higher. Less land is required, supervision and treatment of the animals is easier and profits are higher for farmers. In addition, many of the systems required to rear livestock can be automated, which is cheaper and less labour intensive. However, intensive livestock production may lead to overgrazing of the land and soil erosion, while keeping animals in close proximity restricts their movements, raises stress levels, and makes them more vulnerable to the spread of disease. In addition, when animal waste finds its way into streams and rivers, it supplies an excess of nutrients to the microscopic algae in the water. This leads to eutrophication, which we'll cover later in this chapter, whereby oxygen levels in the water fall and many species are unable to survive. Well done, you've just covered absolutely everything you need to know on topic 20.1, food supply. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate your subscription and I'll see you next time for topic 20.2, habitat destruction.